Okay, so welcome again um, to our Art of Craving meeting. Um, my name is Antje Howard. I am a Neurographica instructor. And today um, I chose to work with the topic of grief um, because I'm working through my own grief at the moment. And I uh, was kind of trying to get back to my work, which is teaching art, but I feel that this grief needs to be part of it. So this is an attempt to bring those two together in a healing way. Uh, the practice that we're working with, Neographica, is a very simple drawing practice. Um, so for anyone who doesn't think that they're an artist, it's perfect. Um, we work with very abstract, very simple um, lines and figures and colors. Um, I'm going to guide everyone through the process step by step. Um, if the live participants, if you guys have any questions, uh, maybe you can type them in the chat. And if I don't react, then open your microphone and, and tell me. But if you have any questions in between, you can just put it in the chat. Um, the theme that we're working with today is one of the first ones that kind of came up for me. Um, when I lost my son, I was uh, giving birth in, induced at 31 weeks because my baby had died. And I was in the hospital and I had no idea where I was. I couldn't find myself again. I was just like so confused and so many emotions and I literally lost myself so the first process that I started there and I started it very intuitively helped me to figure out where I am and um, I created a process out of that and this is the first one that I want to start with because in the grieving process very often we kind of forget ourselves because everything around us is so intense and it's maybe too much that, um, yeah, we don't know where we are. We don't know where we're going. And so uh, this process today is kind of like to place ourselves again um, in a way that's really just looking at what is now and then in the second step, we're going to look at where we want to go from here. Um, and we do that through the process. Um, before we start drawing, I would like to ask everyone to just check in with themselves. So if you can, I would like to invite you to just sit comfortably for a moment. Good if you can feel your feet on the ground or feel your buttocks on the chair or wherever you're sitting. If it feels comfortable, you can close your eyes for a few moments and just take some deep breaths. And really just arriving in this moment here and now. Taking deep breaths. and releasing anything that needs to go right now. And if there's anything that keeps you from here, any stuck energy, any emotions, just breathe them. And you can just really out of your mouth with the exhale, maybe even with the sound or a sigh, let go of anything that you can let go right now. Yeah. And feeling your feet on the ground, feeling where your body touches the ground under you in your chair. Feeling your chest rising and falling. And just checking in with your body, feeling if there's any tension anywhere. 
And if you find any ten spot, you can just send your breath there, trying to release. Relaxing a little bit, letting your shoulders load down. Um, and just being with whatever shows up here and now. And then feeling the space of your heart. If you wish to, you can even place a hand on your heart if that feels good. And checking in with your emotions. What emotions are coming up for you? What emotions are present right now? Just with the observing attitude being with it, inviting whatever wants to come up and show up right now to be here in this space. Without judging it, without trying to change it, just inviting, inviting everything that wants to come into the space right now, giving it space. Now is the time where all these emotions can come up. Mm. Breathing in there, anything that can be let go, that wants to be let go, releasing a little bit. Mm. Without any pressure. And then moving to your head, Allowing your thoughts to be there, watching them. Maybe they've drifted already. And again, without judgment, without trying to change anything, just feeling into it, listening where you are right now. Bringing the body, the emotions, and the thoughts together into the space. And taking a few more deep breaths. Experiencing yourself in all these different layers. And we're getting ready. So whenever you're ready, you can slowly open your eyes. And we're gonna start our drawing process. I will change my camera view so that you can see what I do. Yes, okay, this works. You can see my piece of paper here. And there's my pen. Um, so I guess because we have a few people that have never done any neurographica, I will very briefly introduce the one very important element that we're working with today, which is a line. We call it the neurographic line. And um, you don't have to start drawing yet unless you just want to practice a little bit. Um, so the neurographic line is a line that in a way mirrors life. Life is never straight. Life does not go the way we want it to go. Life takes us to places that we did not expect to go. And this is exactly what this line does. So when I draw a line, I can just start anywhere. And usually we start at the edge of the paper, which is one element that's really interesting and really kind of unique about Neurographica is that we imagine that our canvas is infinite. The line goes on. So I'm just gonna start drawing a line and 
To begin with, I always start very slow. And as I said, it's not straight. And I just allow my hand to go. And I try to not um, control where it goes. So whenever I feel that my mind is kind of thinking, okay, my line is going to go up there to the right corner, then I change my direction. So throughout the path of this line, I try to let go of control over and over and over again so that I create a line that is completely unique. Every line will look different. Your line will look completely different than mine because you're a complete different person. Your story is different. Um, and the line will have no recognizable pattern. So it's not like a sinus curve, for example. No, it doesn't go up and down and up and down and up and down, always the same. It goes up and down, but it goes in a non-pattern. Um, yeah, so this is what we're going to work with. Um, this is just a very brief introduction. And if you haven't worked with it before, I just, um, well, I'm just going to say, you know, just try it out, see how it feels. One of the things that we do in a graphic that is very, very important part of this process is the observation of ourselves, just like we did in the meditation right now. While you draw this line, try to be aware of what your body does, what your emotions do, what your thoughts do. Okay. So this just as a very brief introduction. And now we're actually just going to draw a lot of different lines. And you can try out how that feels. For the drawing today, I would like to set a frame, though. Um, sometimes we do that in neurographic and I feel that in the work that we do today, it's very good to build a frame. And by frame, I mean that I'm just going to draw a rectangle into my paper. So that there's a little bit of space around it. And the reason why I do that is that I am setting a frame for the drawing and a frame for the work that I'm doing. So I'm going to say that anything that comes up today will come up in this space and we don't have to take it into our day if we don't wish to do that. So, you know, any emotion that pour out, for example, we pour them on this in this square or in this rectangle in this space but we don't have to take it into our everyday life another thing that i like to do when i draw and that i really really recommend to do as well is date so today is june the 18th so i'm gonna say june 18 22 and this is just to keep track um, once you start drawing a lot, you're going to have a lot of pictures and then it's really, really nice if you look through them in half a year, you can look at all your processes that came from today until in a half a year. And then the third thing that uh, is one of the very special things about Neurographica is that we set a theme for our drawing. And the theme for today for me is where am I? So I'm going to write this. And I can even say, where am I today? So as I said in the beginning, we're gonna go into just finding out like where we are in our process, in our grieving process uh, to be specific. So, you could, for example, draw this drawing once a week and every single week it will completely look different and it will tell you a different story. And then after a month or so, you can look at the drawings and see your process. This is like the idea behind that. Okay. Oh, 
Oh, good. So now uh, we start with some lines. Um, what I like to work with in no graphic drawings is the directions. Um, we can draw a line from the left to the right, from the right to the left, from the bottom up and from the top down. Those are the four directions that I would like to work with today. And before we do those, I want to just speak very briefly about them. Um, there are actually studies that culturally, um, everybody who writes from left to right, like we do, uh, we experience the passing of time from the left to the right. So if I was gonna, you know, um, document time somehow, here would be the past and here would be the future. So we can work with that in this drawing, imagining that on this side of the drawing somewhere is the past and on this side somewhere is the future and here basically is our present. So the first line <clears throat> that I would like to start with, we can draw the way that we would write. We uh, go from the past into the future. So let's do one line like that. And while you draw this line, feel the feelings in your body, your emotions, and what your thoughts. And feel if that's how comfortable or uncomfortable it is to move from the past to the future in your drawing. Breathing consciously and really allow yourself to take time with that. Just one line from the past to the future. And so we go into the drawing and out of the drawing. And that means that our line goes, goes on, right? We can go further into the future and further into the past. And now the second line, let's try one from the future to the past or from the now into the past, looking at the past and again, feeling what that does to you. How does it feel to look into the past, to move? And maybe there are some things that have not been solved, for example, Maybe it's comfortable to look into the past. Maybe it's uncomfortable. Just observing what that feels like. So we got these two directions. And then we have the top and the bottom. And for me, when I draw lines from the top down, to me, it's very grounding. I always feel like a root. Um, it could also be letting go though. So we can feel into that, what that feels like to ground ourselves down or to let go of anything that needs to be let go. So let's draw one line from the top to the bottom, starting anywhere at the top and going anywhere at the bottom. And again, moving the line without controlling it. wherever it wants to go. Slowly, all the way down. Checking how that feels. And then the last one that we can try out is the line upwards. And this is one of the lines that we really like to work or Pavel Piskarev, the founder of No Graphica, he loves to work with that one because it's kind of building us up. You know, he um, associates it without straightening our spine. So standing up in life. And this is something that for me was really unthinkable in the beginning of my grieving. I was down on the ground. I was kind of like hovering down on the ground, but there was no 
going upward, no straightening. Um, so again, just starting anywhere at the bottom, going upward and feeling what that does, how that feels in your body, in your emotions, and what kind of thoughts come up with it. Hmm. Now, there was probably differences in those lines. And I would like to invite you to choose which direction was the most comfortable for you, which one felt the best in your body or which one brought up good emotions for you and draw another two lines in that direction. So you got the choice either from left to right, from right to left, up or down. Just two more lines in the direction that was the most comfortable for you personally. And today, actually for me, was the one that goes up. I'm going to draw two more up. And again, staying with the slowness of it. Feeling the body. Breathing. And one more. And once you've done those two, in the direction that felt comfortable, we do one in the opposite direction. So I went, took two lines up. So I'm gonna take one line down just to balance it and to remind myself that I also need to ground. Or no, if you took two in the, to the future, you remind yourself that there's also the past or other way, other way around. So our last line goes, the other way. Okay. Nice. Now we have a beautiful chaos of lines, just like life. No, life comes in all directions, is never straight, and it's creating this kind of mess that we have to deal with every day. Um, now we will connect all these lines. And the way we do that, I'm going to show that quickly again on my other paper here because it's kind of easier. So I'm just going to draw one more line here. Like this. So we have all these spots where the lines cross each other, where our past meets our future, our roots meet the impulse to grow up and straighten ourselves, or you know, where our roots meet our future or something like this. So where the lines meet each other. And we have those crossings here that make little X's just like this. We have a crossing. So instead of having these crossings where we kind of have like triangle shapes here, we want to have rounded shapes. So I'm going into the crossing and creating a little hub looking thing. So instead of these, we want to have these. So I'm going into my drawing, rounding out the corners. And the way I like to do that in a drawing like that is that I will actually go all around 
the shape that has formed in between these two lines and make this a round shape. And then I color out the corners. And this in a way allows me to look into the spaces between. Um, I like to kind of describe it as reading between the lines. And we have all these shapes that are now created through our different lines and we just read in between them. We look what happened in between. So I will go into all these shapes and make them round. And we're gonna do that throughout the entire picture. Just starting anywhere. And I'm just gonna do the one inside. If you wish to later, you can also add roundings to the edge. But since we have limited time, I'm going to concentrate on the stuff in here. Just going anywhere, a shape that's kind of interesting to me. I go around the shape, making it round. Just following the line as it is. And it does not have to be perfect. So if you suffer from perfectionism, now is a moment to heal that. You can let go of that. And I would like to invite you to really just feel into what this process of rounding, of combining, of uniting all of these different lines, all of these different aspects of our lives, these different directions into one big whole. What that does to you, to your body, to your emotions, staying with observing yourself. The graphic I really is like a very active meditation where we do a lot of things at the same time. We draw, we watch ourselves, we watch the lines. So it's really becoming aware. And to make this process easier for you, I'm just gonna stop talking for a few minutes. Let's say we do like five minutes and then I'm gonna check in with everyone. Just moving into your own process with that, looking at your network that's created there.
Always remembering to breathe. We want to kind of smooth everything out so that it looks like one big movement. There's no corners, there's no harsh cuts or something. Everything is round, it's like a river system where everything flows into each other. And as I said, if it's not perfect right now, that's totally fine. And if you don't manage to do every single corner, that's also okay. The more often you do that, the easier it's gonna be. And I hope you kind of fell into this process. Hope it kind of probably relaxed. It's, it should be relaxing. So I hope it was relaxing for you right now. And now I would like to um, go on with the next step. Unless that yeah, looks like everybody's being okay. Okay. So now. The big question to ask ourselves is up here, where am I today? So I would like to invite you to very intuitively without thinking about it, without interpreting it, without any reason, finding the place in this picture where you are and drawing a circle there. Circle can have any size, and can be anywhere on the picture and it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. For me, this area here kind of calls my attention for some reason. So I'm gonna say, okay, this is where I am today. And I just draw a circle. I just allow my hand to draw a circle. And however big I feel today. And as I said, circles, don't have to be perfect in neurographica, um, but that also gets easier the more you do it. And then we will integrate the circle 
into the whole drawing by rounding it out again. So everywhere where the circle crosses my lines here, I'm going to round again to go and smooth it out so that my circle is a part of the whole. I am a part of this whole network of past and future and all the other aspects. I am in here. And you can feel again, what does it feel like? How do you feel with your circle? How do you feel about where you are right now? I'm really just observing, not judging yourself for any thoughts, for any feelings. Just really becoming more and more conscious. Okay. So finding yourself in the picture. And then the next thing that I would like to do is to place our loved ones that we've lost, or if it's an aspect of your life or something else that you grieve, whatever your grief, bring that into the picture in another circle or in several circles. So it's many, several different people, for example, you can place those into the picture. And also whoever comes up right now, I'm going to put my son in here and um, he's here somewhere, I feel. So he is connected with me. It's a little circle there. And then today, for some reason, I'm also thinking of my grandma who passed away two years ago. And I feel like she's floating up here somewhere. So I'm going to also bring her into this picture. Um, the circles, as you see, they can overlap. They can even go half outside of the picture. So you could have a circle that's only half a circle, or only a quarter circle, just somewhere at the edge, that's also possible. And so feel into and really allow your intuition to guide you in that. Who is in this picture? Who wants to be in this picture? And where are they? And then just very intuitively draw how big they are right now. So I got this up here. And then again, we go ahead and integrate them into the whole as well. Feeling into this aspect of bringing these people or these parts of our lives, I'm going to say that we've lost into our moment right now. And again, if it does not Make a perfect circle that is completely okay. Just like life is imperfect. Rambling everything, connecting everything. Hmm. 
Okay. Now, I want to, in between, add just a little bit of color. And I know that color is a kind of, it's one of the most favorite things in Neurafrica, but in the context of grief, it might feel like a kind of difficult thing because our life might not feel very colorful. But I invite you to feel into what you feel like, what color kind of feels like you. And if it's gray, that's totally fine too. For me at the moment, it's mostly dark blue. And of course I could find like a million ways to interpret this, but I'm just gonna draw and feel into it. So I'm just gonna give my circle a very light touch of color. And I'm going over all the lines. So the coloring in Neurographica is not about perfectly coloring every little feel like we do in the coloring with numbers or something like this. We use the color as another layer of drawing another layer of meaning. In this case, really just the feeling that I have right now. And if you're really not sure what kind of color, you know, if you don't know what color you are, just imagine what color would kind of feel good to you right now. What color would bring healing to you? What color would help you? And you see, I'm not coloring the entire circle. I'm just like giving myself a shade, just a very light. And of course you can give yourself as much color as you wish. But right now I'm not feeling like completely colorful. So I'm just gonna very lightly shade. And we go over several segments at the same time. And then there might be spaces where the color kind of bleeds into the background. Like here, I just started going a little bit over. So just gonna allow that and give my background just a very light shade of that color. If it feels like that. A little part of this. And then you can ask yourself what color does the person, the thing, your loved one that you lost, the one that you grieve, what color does that person maybe have? Well, what color is missing in your life from that person missing? And for me, my son, for some reason, he was always orange and yellow to me. So I'm going to use this orange and also give him just a little bit of color, that circle that I, I thought was him, that circle that I gave the meaning of being him. So very light, being very... Um, gentle with the colors and again feeling what does that color do in your body in your emotions what comes up with it and then I have my grandma my grandma gets this beautiful lilac here can be up here, shining a beautiful lilac down on me. And maybe with the coloring, a little story also fo forms for you. About what 
that is a kind of came from this person into your life, for example, or came from this aspect of your life. And this color kind of is a little bit in the background as well, I feel. But my grandma, she's really, when I think of it, she's always like around me. So her color will be kind of around me as well. And uh, you probably don't even see it. It's very light. But yeah, so however much you can imagine right now or however much feels good right now. Okay. So I just wanted to give a little bit color. And now we're gonna go back to drawing a few more circles. But I kind of like to bring this energy of the people or the things that we miss in our lives into the drawing. Because now we're gonna think of where we want to go from here. And when I talk about okay, going from here, I talked about the different directions before. So maybe you wish to go more into the future. Maybe you want to be more grounded, want to be able to let go a little bit more. Maybe you want to feel a bride rising up again. Or maybe there's something in the past that still needs to be solved. Maybe you have to take a step back into the past. Or maybe you just want to expand a little bit. So we have all these different directions and different possibilities of where we could go. And for me, for some reason, I want to go right here. And it's not so much because of the way I interpret it, but because of what I see in the picture. So you can also just look at your picture and feel into what is the direction where I feel drawn to? Um, so I'm going to make a circle here and I feel that I, I want to expand. I want to be bigger and I want to be over here somewhere. So a little bit higher up. Oh, I want to be way bigger apparently. And my circle tells me right now that I also want to be very closely connected to those different aspects that I brought into my picture. I want to be connected to my grandma. I want to be connected to the self that I am right now. And I want to be very connected to my son. And you know, you can interpret this, but for now, I would like to invite you to just feel into it. And we're gonna round it out again, bringing this new circle this new place where we might go in the future into our drawing. And while we do that again, scan the body, feeling where we are with that. How does it resonate? I'm just gonna leave you quiet for a moment so you can dive into this feeling.
Listening to the thoughts that come up for you. Maybe there's a story behind this. But it's really not so much about interpreting, but about listening to whatever shows up for you. We can make choices in many different ways. We can make them with our mind, thinking about, I want to rise up into the future, but maybe the next step to go for me right now is looking a little bit up into the past. And maybe by looking into the past, I can rise up more, I can expand more. So that's like what comes up for me right now when I look at my circle, when I kind of feel into it and listen to the story that my mind tells. And I think it's a very beautiful one too. going to give you maybe another minute just integrating being with it And now that we kind of found maybe an idea of where we want to go next in however long time, maybe I'm going to be there in a year, who knows. Um, I would like to invite us to think about what can help to go there. So I'm going to think of what are the people, the things in my life, maybe the practices that can help me on this path, going to this new place where I want to go or where I feel that life draws me. And um, just as an example, for me, drawing is definitely always one that I do. And we can just add maybe smaller circles, maybe they're bigger though but I usually draw a little bit smaller circles kind of at the edge of the circle. They can overlap. You could also make like a little pile of circles somewhere. And in these, if you wish to, you could write down what it is. Um, I may do that with like a thinner pen. So I'm gonna say this is drawing just for me to remember. So as I said, you don't have to do that, but you can name these circles. Um, then for some reason, I always feel nature helps me. So I'm gonna draw a circle. That's called nature. So just really allow yourself to freely associate to just let your ideas pour out asking yourself what can help me on this path what can bring me there i'm gonna do one here for my grandma which is remembering and as i said you don't have to name them and you can do as many or as little as come up for you right now. Can be people too. I'm definitely going to have my husband in here. 
and when the outside is full, you can also add more on the outskirts somewhere. But making sure that they're somehow connected through lines or just overlapping your circles. And I even have crying there because I know that that still helps me. And then of course we want to integrate those again into our network, into our story, into our moment that we are drawing here. Going ahead and rounding out any corners. We really always come back to the rounding as a process of integrating into the drawing, but course also into ourselves and checking in again what does that do to me right now how do I feel Hang on. And always remembering to breathe. Taking your time. Keep checking in. Allowing this process to touch your inside. Touch you many different levels. Oh, I'm on attention is always good to take a deep breather, always a good idea. If anything needs to be released, it can always be released through the breath. And then the next thing that I would like to invite you is to ask yourself if there may be a new color, 
that may come that you may want in your life. Maybe it's one of the things that might help you that brings a new color. Maybe your new circle has a specific color. And again, if you have no idea what color to choose, just ask yourself what color would make you feel really good right now. What color would bring healing? And then very gently introducing that color into your drawing. As much or as little as feels good right now. Staying with yourself. Still got a few more corners to round. I just want to mention that for anyone who's ready for the next step. Okay. And I'm just gonna remain quiet maybe for around four or five minutes. Let's add just a little bit more color. And trust your feeling with that again. Not always just trusting whatever feels right. And the color can really freely flow through the drawing. You don't have to pay any attention basically to the lines actually. Of course, we're kind of orienting on the lines, but you can go over just color as much as feel good right now.
And now there are two more steps. The next one being um, bringing an energy flow that will help us move from the one circle where we are now to the other circle. And we're going to draw a fat line, meaning a line that's uh, stands out bigger than all the other lines in the drawing. So I have my first circle here, this little blue one, and my second circle is up here. So my line will go this way. I want to first touch the place where I'm now and then touch the place where I want to go, emphasizing the direction that I want to move right now. And you know, if your circles are probably in different ways, you just find the, the pathway that goes through the first circle first and then through the second one. Um, we start again at the outside. And I'm just gonna go with starting a new line because it kind of has to come from here. Uh, but you could also follow a line that's already there. And I'm probably gonna meet lines that are already there in my drawing. I'm going somehow from here, moving through the drawing, through my first circle, then through my second circle, all the way out of the picture. And I'm going to go over this line several times and making it a really kind of fat line that really stands out. So I kind of left spaces there now and now I'm gonna fill in the spaces to make this line really big, really where when I look at the picture, I'm definitely gonna see it, which means that I will remember the pathway that I am on right now, the direction that I'm moving on right now. So I can use this picture as a reminder of where I'm going on this grief journey, in my grief journey. Whenever you go over it again, it's good to go in the same direction several times to just enforce this movement for you. And for everyone who knows Neurographica, of course, you can see that this line might not be the direction that we usually want to go in drawings, but the grieving situation is not a usual situation. You could also add more lines, several lines. If you feel, for example, that one of the aspects, one of the things your helpers around um, became super important for you, or you want to connect something else more strong to um, this flow, then you can add a second line. For me today, this line is perfect. I can maybe show you my drawing from yesterday. Um, so you can see here, for example, I have three fat lines and they're all going there. This was my first circle and this was my second circle. But then I felt that I needed to include this circle and I needed to touch these circles somehow. So I made several, um, lines, but they're all going in the same direction. So if you add more lines, more fat lines, they need to go in the same 
general direction so that it all takes you on this journey in this one direction. And then, of course, we go ahead and integrate that as well. Like everything else, especially the big lines need to be connected. And I really like to think of those like rivers. When I see my picture as a river system, like I'm going to say rivers of energy, maybe, then this is the big Mississippi River, for example. Uh, this is the one that carries so much energy and so much water that really connects me to my flow and gives me a direction. This is how we do this specific line in this drawing. Really emphasizing the direction. And of course, this direction can change in the future. This is why we have a frame that says, this is for today, this is for now. And maybe tomorrow, my direction's already changed. Life can be very unpredictable, but this is where I am now. And this is how I feel now. Okay. And then our very last step is to emphasize one of the elements of our drawing. Um, we, in a way, make a choice here, which of the circles with all the different meanings that we put into these circles is the most important for us at this moment. And again, this is for right now, so it doesn't have to be forever. It's not like a forever um, decision here. But so my choices would be, for example, I could need to focus on where I am right now, or I want to focus on my next step where I want to go. I could also focus on my loved ones. And maybe I realized that they were more important than I thought or that I needed to pay more attention to something. Or they could also be these little helpers the things that helped me on my journey. Maybe I found out that community is really the most important thing right now and I have to concentrate on that, then I would um, mark that. So there is a way to kind of make this choice from a mental, um, from a mental space. You know, I can just make the decision and just and when I talk about my story, then I see, okay, this is the most important. Or I can just look at my drawing and see which is the element that jumps at me. I like to do that. I like to close my eyes and look at the drawing. And the very first element I see, that's the most important. Sometimes our mind, our intellect kind of plays tricks on us and wants us to think other things. So that's why I kind of double check with myself. When I close my eyes and I look at my drawing, this big circle is for me the most important one. And in a way, in my mind, it's also the most important one. So in this case, it actually fits together. But I like to kind of double check with that. And what I do is just enhance the outside of this circle so that when I look at this picture, that's going to be the very first element I see. Of course, mine is also a big fat thing in the middle, so it should not be hard to make it stick out. If you choose a smaller circle, or if a smaller circle kind of became more important for you, then it's really important to make the outline so big that it visually sticks out, that when you look at your picture, that's the first thing you see. That's like the one that jumps into your face and says, hey, I'm important. So I'm going around again and just emphasizing it, making my line very big, standing out. Of course, I've been working with such a fat pen as well that my lines are really, really thick. So this way I kind of have to really make it stick out. 
But yeah, so when I look at it now, I see it. And this is the effect that you want. You want to really see it. I forgot some corners there. So this is, in a way, the last step in our drawing. Um, and now we can just spend a few moments looking at the drawing, feeling the drawing, and hearing or seeing its story. This is one of the things that's also very special about Neurafica. We don't just draw the drawing and that's it. We um, kind of reflect on it afterwards. And of course, in the group right now, live here, we can do that in a moment together, live for everyone else. Um, I invite you to just be with your drawing for a little while. Maybe you want to journal about it or something. Just allowing whatever the message is that's in your drawing to come to you um, in whichever way. Um, I like to put my drawings on a wall for at least a few days, um, mostly in my room where I just walk by I don't like to sit in front of it and stare at it, but I just have it in my space so that um, sometimes the, the message kind of comes after a few days. You no, know, I look at the drawing or I walk by and then I suddenly have this thought. I have some understanding or yeah, something just comes to me. So I would like to invite you to kind of be open with to that just in the maybe next few days, if you feel like it. Also, of course, you can always add more stuff. So if you walk by one day and you think like, oh, this needs one more line, you can totally do that as well. So I'm gonna come back uh, one more second here to finish the recording part and uh, tell everyone out there, thank you for joining. I would love to see your pictures. I'm gonna post um stuff under this video if i post it somewhere um to let you know where you can share it and i would like to let everyone know that i'm also teaching introductory classes and other classes many different courses as recordings right now and i'm just starting to teach life again and um i also offer one-on-one -on -one, um processes uh, we use Neurographic as a coaching tool sometimes. So um, for anyone who's interested in really working privately through their own themes in a very intimate container, that's available as well. You can just contact me and we talk about it. So thank you, everyone. And I hope to see you soon.